Well, hello, and welcome back to another of our Thought for the Day uh, from Isaiah chapter 40. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you will indeed, through your Holy Spirit, open our eyes that we may see the wonderful things in your word. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, today we've reached verse 11 of chapter 40, and I'm going to read from verse 10 just to give the context. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. In verse 11, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. Well, these two verses, 10 and 11, stand in extraordinary contrast. In verse 10, God is the sovereign Lord, the one who comes to rule in power with a mighty arm. And after that awesome portrayal of the power of Almighty God, Isaiah is moved by the Holy Spirit to present this same God as a shepherd. And what a wonderfully rich biblical theme is God as the shepherd of Israel in the Old Testament and of Jesus as the good shepherd in the New Testament. David, himself a shepherd king, uses this picture in the Psalms, most famously, of course, in the 23rd Psalm with its imagery of the shepherd, sheep, pasture and the shepherd's staff. But also in Psalm 28, David prays, save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. And Asaph begins Psalm 80 with these words, hear us, O shepherd of Israel. And then, of course, in the Gospels, we have the parable of the lost sheep, as well as Jesus' exposition of himself as the good shepherd, of which more in a moment. Well, I think there are at least three truths that could warm our hearts in verse 11. First, to notice that there's a special relationship. You see, the sheep that the shepherd tends in verse 11 are not just any old sheep. They are his flock. And that's exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ teaches in John chapter 10, verse 14. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. I know my sheep. And my sheep know me. And how have they become his sheep? Because Jesus has laid down his life for them. Verse 15. And the profoundest statement of the Christian faith is that each true Christian belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Each one is his own particular possession because he has bought us by dying for our sins on the cross at Calvary. That's why the Apostle Paul can write to the Corinthians these words, You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Philip Keller wrote a devotional book on Psalm 23 based on his own experience as a shepherd. He recalls in the book buying his first flock. Because I had paid hard money for them, money that I'd earned, he wrote, I felt in a special way that they, in very truth, were a part of me and I was a part of them. They were exceedingly precious to me. And our Saviour feels the same way about us, his own sheep. He has a special relationship with us and we with him. We are indeed his flock. But then second, that there's also an ample provision this is what Isaiah means when he tells us that this coming saviour will tend his flock like a shepherd. And what Isaiah really means by tending is that he will do for his flock and provide for his flock everything that they could possibly need. And if you're a Christian believer today, then you and I have that ample provision for all our spiritual needs, his forgiveness, his mercy, his grace, his love, his peace, and of course the provision of his Holy Spirit 
dwelling in our hearts. So this verse speaks of a special relationship, an ample provision, and third, that there is a tender protection. Now, not all protection is tender. An electric fence protects the sheep, but it's not very tender. Guard dogs protect, but the last one I saw and heard didn't look particularly tender. But what does this verse tell us about our Saviour's protection? That not only does he tend and gather, but he carries us and leads us. And those whom he gathers are described as the lambs, the weakest members of the flock. And he gathers them up so that they don't have to walk themselves. They don't have to stumble or go astray. What a reassuring truth for each and every day. Back in John chapter 10 again, John's, uh, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. The hymn writer Anna Waring put it like this, Wherever he may guide me, no want shall turn me back. My shepherd is beside me and nothing can I lack. His wisdom ever waketh, his sight is never dim. He knows the way he taketh and I will walk with him. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that that may be true of us, that we may walk with you, our good shepherd, being led by you, carried by you, guided by you, provided for by you. And we ask it for your glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>